Hey guys, Takiat here, and I want to do a video talking about how I've come to select my tree for SSF. This is particularly for my build in SSF. Um, do whatever works for you, but I'm going to go through my thought process for how I've spec'd it. Hopefully that will help you. Before we go into any specifics though, it's worth working out how you actually generate points. So every time you do a new map, instead of getting a bonus objective as you would with the current system, you get one passive point. There are 100 base maps, that's 100 passives. You get a further 17 from all the unique maps and a further 11 from doing all the Maven content. So with that in mind, unless you know you're gonna be absolutely speed running and getting everything out and buying all the different maps um, in trade, I would plan for around 100-ish points. That's assuming you're unlocking the Atlas, doing maybe a little bit of unique maps and be doing a little bit of Maven stuff. But if you're around 100, great. If you play slower, plan more, maybe around say 80-ish, if that makes sense. So I'm now going to go through explaining everything that I felt like I needed um, early on, stuff that I will need later on, some things that I would like, and I made a list of things that I don't need for my build to function, and that's why I came to my current setup. So because I'm playing in SSF, I need a crafting mechanic. So I need to have a league that I'm focusing on somewhere on my atlas, which is aiding me in crafting my gear, because I cannot trade with other players. So that would be something like Essences, something like Harvest, Delve to get Fossils, or Expedition through crafting through Rog or getting well-rolled rares from Gwenon. Uh, betrayal I need. I need to unlock my Betrayal modifiers. I cannot buy them. There are some um, initial helpful uniques for me from Betrayal. Crimson Storm is a good mid-game bleed bow. That if I happen to lock into it, would uh, save me quite a lot of progress and crafting materials until I got a Elder Bow to craft on later. And I'm going to need map progress to, one, just clear my atlas, but also the faster I'm getting new maps, the faster I'm getting more passives. So I'm going to go into some investment on uh, passives which will increase my map progression. Late game, I'm going to need Elder Influence. I'm going to need other just general influences, stuff like Drox. Um, and Maven stuff would be getting the Maven passive, stuff like Awakener Gems. This isn't stuff that I'm going to need in the first couple of days, though, which is why I haven't actually specced into any Maven, Elder, or other influences. Um, but you can see that I'm very primed for my tree to pick up the Cirrus Conqueror influence here, come up to get the Elder influence, come here to get the Maven influence. So I'm very well suited there. We currently haven't seen all the mod pools for the two new Eldridge stuff. If I'm lucky, the blue stuff will be the stuff that I need. If it turns out I need red stuff, that'll be something I spec into later. I would like to have Alva nodes. Um, Alva and Incursion is going to be a good source of some very powerful rares. I will be playing a Trapper at some point in this league, so I would like to be getting the Incursion Trapper gloves. Um, I would like access to Cluster Jewels, and I would like access to Essences. While I'm not currently planning any builds that need specific Essence modifiers, Essences are one of my favourite crafting um, sources. I do not need... I don't need Ritual, I don't need any Ritual bases. Ritual is a very rewarding mechanic outside of the bases, but since I don't need the bases, um, it's not something I'm prioritizing. Likewise, I don't need Metamorph Catalyst, I don't need any Metamorph Unique, so it's not something I'm prioritizing. I don't need any Heist Uniques, fortunately. If I did, I'd be focusing on nodes which gave me blueprints. Um, I don't need any Breach items. I don't need any Legion items. Yeah, a Legion Jaw would be neat, but I don't need it, and they're a massive sink of divines, which in SSF early, unnecessary. And for Bestry, I don't really need any of the Bestry crafting stuff. So with that all in mind, how do I settle upon this base tree? Now, I, as I said, I would like some Alva stuff, but Alva is all very firmly on the left, and you can see that I'm very firmly on the right. So early on, I will take this node, which will give me a chance to get an additional Alva mission on completion. And then I will just stockpile my Alva missions. Um, when I'm eventually at a point where I'm going to do a bunch of Alva, maybe when I do my second build on the Trapper, I will then spec into the incursion nodes. And then I'll blast all my saved up ones. But it's not something that I need early. So this little bit here is just ensuring that I'm set up later on. But I don't need it uh, in the first week. Now, since I'm getting that node, um, I will take this guaranteed new essence in every single map. Um, I don't have any further essence investment, unfortunately. It just didn't work for me points and where I am on the skill tree. Um, but still getting an additional essence in every map will just give me good stuff. Um, 
And something I do invest very heavily into, and is a big reason why I decided to go so far onto the right, is Expedition. So Expedition is going to be my crafting mechanic. Expedition is going to be the source of basically everything that I need. I think Expedition is the most flexible league mechanic if you're unsure what to go for. So Rog is a very good source of rares. You get to do pseudo crafting through Rog. Gwenon is a great source of high eye level rare bases and a great source of uniques, which is very important in SSF. And you can get currency. You can get essences from it. And then from the logbooks, you can get access to all the other League of Mechanics. So yeah, it's, it's a very safe one. Um, and also one thing which is quite cool about it is it doesn't really matter if you're running it in low tier or high tier content um, because of the way the artifacts work. It doesn't matter if you get like, you can't get like low eye level artifacts if that sort of makes sense. So it always kind of has value. Um, likewise, I need Betrayal unlocked early on and all the Betrayal stuff happens to be next to all the expedition stuff so that started leaning me in a certain direction and i need map progress so to get my map progress i've invested into some key kirik nodes and i've also gone for some of the map drops have a 50 percent chance to be one tier higher uh, a lot of people are considering these mandatory we don't know how important they'll feel i don't take shaping mountains um i could it's an extra six points maybe it's something but if I feel like I need it, I'll add it in. I have some fluff points that I've spent, which I'll talk to you later. If I feel like I need it, I'll cut those fluff points, put these in. But I'm hoping I can get away without it. These Kirik nodes. Um, so scouting reports and the additional Kirik mission each day. Basically, think of it like the Zana stuff, but think of it like a much more valuable Zana. You'll be picking more high value maps. Uh, I'll be able to use it to target unique maps to get passive points, to target maps that I'm missing to get points rerolling his inventory to buy maps to get points and also i can be using it to focus on conqueror maps to get the influences that i need pretty good synergy um also happens to be right next to these nodes which give a bunch of additional map drops have a chance to be one tier higher which is great um and then you also get some bonuses if you happen to run fortunes and favors of brave and here you get some bonuses for favored maps both of which is more of a late game thing so um, once I kind of locked in that core thing of like, let's take all the betrayal notes, as you can see, that kind of set in my routing. Let's now take all of the good expedition nodes that kind of set in that routing. And let's take the good map drop road nodes. What did I spend my remaining 20, 30 ish points on? So these four points are further support for Kirik. If I feel like it's not worth, I will drop it. And again, those score points could then be redistributed into shaping the mountains. Um, I take uh, up here. I think this is going to be pretty strong in SSF specifically. So this is 75% increased rarity from items dropped by unique bosses. This could be confirmed to only be map bosses, not just like any unique enemy in a map. Um, unique bosses drop a guaranteed additional currency item. Strong. And unique bosses have a 20% chance to be duplicated. So great. So it's just going to be more bosses. Um, I've got a bunch of... Um, chance for connected maps from unique bosses that gets doubled when you double the boss because you're getting more chance there so that's got some pretty good synergy and if you get two bosses you get the guaranteed double currency which is pretty good um we then decided to go for the abyss jewels so i decided to go for a little bit of splash into abyss i was looking at what was good for my build and actually um abyssal jewels can be pretty good for me i scale off flat physical i scale off life I scale off percent um, damage over time, all of which I can get. Um, I can get resistances, I can get some stats. There are some pretty good mods on there. Um, and it was like, hmm, actually, I've got a pretty good chance of getting better jewels this way. Um, since I haven't got access to clusters right now, I have access to a bunch of two-point jewels. I've got a pretty good chance of getting some good stuff there. So then I'm like, okay, so then what other good nearby nodes will scale up this abyss stuff? So I had a little look-see. And I had these four points, which I already read it right next to. Um, these give me 30% increase in monsters from Abyss and additional chance to have an Abyss per pack size. I want to be rolling pack size on all my maps. Very, very good. I'm getting additional chance for an Abyss from these nodes. You can guarantee Abyss on maps for, I believe, two Chaos. Very good. Uh, additional 3% chance to get Abyss here. And then Abyss monsters grant 50% increased XP. Abyss has 100% increased monsters. Very, very good. And you're like, okay, Taki, 
But then why don't why don't you take this? Because like there's this massive big abyss wheel. Is it because of the points? One because of the points, but also I don't need any of this stuff. So this stuff is all about boosting abyssal depths. This is when you get like the liches. I don't need any item drops from liches. Um, from all my abyss scaling I'm doing, I'm just gonna get some extra bonus liches anyway. Um, and yeah, I just I don't need the depths. I don't need the liches. Um, the post monster level stuff. It's tempting, if anything, but it doesn't really synergize with the rest of my strategy. And keep in mind, this is like my early game sort of tree. Um, and I will eventually be dropping loads to invest more heavily into the Conqueror stuff later on. So it just it's something that while I'm passively progressing my Atlas, um, I'm going to be getting Abysses. I've got a chance to get some decent jewels from it. I'm getting more XP, so I'm progressing faster. I'm getting more monsters, which is more pack size. And... Um, Hmm. I also take these nodes up here, which gives a very low chance, but it is a chance to get unique maps instead of normal maps. Again, unique maps are a source of passive points. I'm going to need them. And I'm hoping through taking these four points and having a good investment into Kirk early on, I can get the unique maps I'm missing. Once I've got my unique maps, I spec out of them. I could potentially like stockpile them and spec in and out of this one point for additional uh, monster level. If I had something which could potentially give me good bases, possibly, but I don't know. Um, but for now, it's a good early game pickup. You could make an argument and maybe better off just going for all the quant nodes instead, possibly. But again, we're planning around a low level of points. And then finally, more chance for exhibition encounters and then logbook stuff. So hopefully me going through that thought process um, will help guide you if you're lost. General rule of thumb, though, pick what you think is fun. If you've got any obvious questions of why didn't you take x node like why didn't you take the harvey nodes why didn't you take the shrine nodes do you think they're bad no they're very strong um i think i'll probably get slightly more value out of the abyss than i will from the harvey the one argument which could be made of taking the harvey stuff over the abyss stuff is higher source of ancient orbs when it comes to getting like a rislava's coil or something um if i decide that like actually i can't really be bothered with the abyss stuff then yeah, I would drop those points for the Harby nodes. Um, also, one thing, Harby, like the super juiced, like a Giga Harby from Unspeakable Offensive and um, like the powerful Harby boss, it's something that could actually screw up some people in the early game. Uh, likewise with the Essence stuff, if you're getting like the Giga Harbies and the Giga Essences and your build isn't that strong early on, you could actually end up screwing yourself over. None of the things that I've invested into actually really make the content rippier in any sense like i'm getting one guaranteed essence mob that's fine the expedition stuff it's not like your expeditions have a thousand percent more life or anything it's just you just get more expeditions likewise with the betrayal stuff i'm just gonna be getting more good veiled items i'm gonna be getting uh just more missions in general get to run more safe houses all pretty solid um yeah an extra unique boss is a little bit rippier, but it's not like the unique boss has like an extra 100% life or anything. So everything that I've specced into is just like, it's helping me complete the goals that I've set in SSF without really scaling the difficulty in any which way, which is very good because in SSF, sometimes you're just very undergeared. Um, so yeah, that's my setup. If you've got any recommendations that you think, oh, maybe you think about this, think about that, let me know. But uh, I'm just putting this video out there so people stop asking me about it. I'm Taki, have a good day best of luck, and just pick whatever you think is fun, because at the end of the day, you've got to pick one of these five starting notes, so just work it out. Bye-bye.